Alrighty, as I was writing this blog post, I kind of realized that it was very complicated to try to explain why esters are bad in the context of malassezia over text. So I decided I'm gonna make this quick video to hopefully explain to everybody. And we're gonna be using glycerol stearate as an example. And just a disclaimer, this is not the actual chemical structure of glycerol stearate. I'm using uh, an example of a love relationship because I think it will help kind of make sense of all this stuff, all right? I know like the chemists watching this right now are like, oh my God, what is he doing? Okay, but anyways. So here we have glycerol steric, which is a combination of glycerin and steric acid. Steric acid has a carbon chain link of 18, which means that malassezia can feed on it, okay? It can grow in the presence of steric acid. And remember how I was just saying, this doesn't have to be glycerin. A steric acid is like a person in a, in a polyamorous relationship or something, because this could be uh, an alcohol like ethanol. And if this was ethanol, this would become ethyl stearate instead of glycerol stearate. So what happens when mal malassezia hydrolyzes esters, it's like, I, I, I titled this malassezia, AKA the asshole homewrecker, because it's trying to get with steric acid. So it basically comes in sabotages this relationship, right? Gets rid of glycerin. And then when it's steric acid all by himself, well, they get together, meaning that they basically start like a love relationship. And in terms of biochemistry, this would mean that malassezia uses steric acid to grow and, and cause all your skin flare ups and acne like bumps and all that awful stuff. However, like I was just saying, it does depend on what fatty acid gets yielded after Malassezia uh, hydrolyzes the ester. One example here. Okay, we have ethyl caprylate. Caprylic acid is outside the problematic 11 to 24 range, meaning that malassezia cannot metabolize caprylic acid. So in this relationship, we have caprylic acid combined with ethanol to give us ethyl caprylate. So what happens is again, malassezia goes in there, sabotages this relationship, and this time it's caprylic, caprylic acid and malassezia. But for whatever reason, in this love relationship, caprylic acid and malassezia are not compatible. It's like, uh, I don't know, ca caprylic acid is cool and likes Radiohead and malassezia likes rap music or something. No offense to people that like rap music. So then essentially malassezia is off to go find love elsewhere. And if it can find love elsewhere through fatty acids, it eventually dies, which is what we're going to continue discussing in the blog post. So I'll see you there.